Hi, oh yeah, year nine or 10. This is your sixth lesson of your ecology booklet and it's called the carbon cycle. So we're gonna start off with five questions that are recap questions. So like in previous lessons. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna ask you to give yourself three minutes to do this. So pause the video, answer the questions in three minutes, then play back the video for the answers and the rest of the lessons. Okay, so pause now. And answer the questions. Right, so hopefully you paused, you answered those questions, and now you're ready and eager for the answers. So question one was, what is that process that all living things do to provide energy to their cells? And of course, the answer is respiration. Now, respiration, of course, happens in our cells and it uses two fundamental things. And those are the reactants. So what are the reactants? Glucose and oxygen. Glucose and oxygen react together to release energy and it makes two products. So the two products, so question three, are carbon dioxide and water. And I really want you to remember that carbon dioxide is made from the process of respiration because that comes in very handy for this lesson. Okay, question four, plants can't make their own food. Oh, sorry, they do make their own food because they can't use food from their environment and they do this through a process called photosynthesis. And question five, what are the reactants needed for photosynthesis is carbon dioxide and water. So I want you to remember that photosynthesis takes in carbon dioxide from the atmosphere in order for the plants to make glucose. Okay, so let's get on with the today's lesson. We've got four keywords that may be completely new to you. If they are, please can you now write them into your glossary? Give yourself a few minutes to do that. Make sure they're in there and you've written the definition properly. If you understand them and you don't need to do that, don't do it. So pause the video right now and add them to your glossary. Okay, so hopefully you've added the lovely keywords to your glossary. I'm not gonna go through the meaning now because it won't make any sense until we've done the lesson. So I'll pick out when we go over these keywords throughout the lesson. Right, so we are talking about the carbon cycle today. Now, before we go on to that specifically, we need to understand that the Earth is what we call a closed system. That means that on Earth, there are a set amount of atoms. We can't add to those atoms, we can't take them away. That's what we've got, it's not gonna change. So because of that, we have to cycle them, they have to recycle them. For example, if you want to reuse your can, you put it in your recycling bin, your drinks can and it get re gets reused for something else. Now that is what happens to atoms on our planet too, especially nutrients. Now the nutrient that we're going to be looking at today is carbon. Now I'm just going to move my face out of the way. So carbon is a really essential nutrient to all living things. It's the fundamental um, element of all living things and it gets recycled throughout the planet. Now, if you've ever watched Lion King, you know about the circle of life. And that's what carbon's doing. It's going round and round the Earth in different stages, in different forms, and it's being cycled. Now, this diagram is a diagram to show you where the carbon goes. The arrows show you what where the carbon is going. For example, here, the carbon is in this tree and it's going into this sheet. I'm not going to explain that in lots of detail now because I'm just telling you what the arrows are showing. Again, if we look at the next diagram, you can see that there's carbon in this factory and the arrow is showing you that carbon is going into the air. So the arrows on a carbon cycle tell you where the carbon is going. And the carbon cycle is the process where carbon goes from one stage to another and gets cycled in different stages. So we're just going to pause there and answer a couple of questions. So what did I mean by a closed system? Remember, the Earth is a closed system. What did I mean? 
and what do the arrows of the carbon circle represent? I'm going to give you 90 seconds to answer that one. So pause the video, time for 90 seconds and answer the questions. Off you go. Right, so hopefully you paused, you answered those questions. Now we're going to have a look at the answers. Number one, the closed system is somewhere that's closed off from the surrounding, so no atoms can be moved in or out. And the arrows of the carbon circle represent where the carbon is going. Okay, right, so we looked at this diagram and I said that the arrows show where carbon is going. What you need to understand by the end of this lesson is all the different stages, so all of these different stages, where carbon is going and how it gets there. Now it looks complicated and you probably are looking at it going, I have no idea. But what I'm going to try and do today is break it up into different steps to try and help you understand. If by the end of the lesson you're still not sure, that's really normal because the carbon cycle, cycle can be quite complex. So just watch the video again, have a go at the questions, watch the video again. It might take you a few goes to really understand it, but don't give up because you will get there. It's simple, but there's a lot of things going on. OK, so like I said, the carbon cycle tells me where the carbon is going. And step one is starting off here. There was carbon dioxide in our atmosphere. Now, I'm just going to circle this bit here. If I can make the pen work. There we go. So we know there's carbon dioxide in our atmosphere. Now, step one tells you how the carbon from the carbon dioxide gets into living things. Now, hopefully you know that. You might be thinking, oh yeah, I know how carbon dioxide gets into living things. You might be looking at this arrow here. And you're right, carbon dioxide gets into living things because plants and algae photosynthesize. And we've talked about that just a second ago. Photosynthesis is carbon dioxide reacting with water, using light's energy to make glucose and oxygen. Now, glucose contains carbon, funnily enough, because carbon dioxide has been taken in by the plant. So this carbon dioxide here goes into the plants and the algae because they photosynthesize. So that's the first step of the carbon cycle. Carbon goes from the atmosphere into plants. That's it, that's the first step. Now step two talks about how that carbon then gets into other living things because I can't, rabbits can't, ants can't take in carbon dioxide from the atmosphere and we all need carbon. So how do we get the carbon? It's very simple. Step two is consuming or eating. So I, I'm going to move my face once more, get carbon by eating plants or other animals that have eaten plants. So the plants have got the carbon, dioxide, carbon from the carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. They now have carbon in them. Lovely. Now the animals eat the plants and they get carbon inside them as well. Now, if we look at this food chain here, this plant has got carbon because it's photosynthesized. The insect eats the plant. Now the insect has carbon. The mouse eats the insect. Now the mouse has carbon. And the owl eats the mouse. Now the owl has carbon. And they all have carbon. Now they don't just use the carbon as carbon. They, we put it into different compounds. For example, proteins contain carbon. Carbohydrates, funnily enough, contain carbon. And fats contain carbon. So fats, proteins and carbohydrates all contain carbon. And you can find all three of those things in living things, plants and animals. Right, so they're the first two stages of this carbon cycle, photosynthesis, and consuming or eating. So let's just recap that, shall we? So there are three questions here. Question three is what is the process that removes carbon dioxide from the atmosphere? Question four, 
Uh, what is what com compounds does carbon get put into those three that I talked about? And question five is how do animals take in the carbon? How do they get the carbon? So answer the questions, please. Give yourself three minutes. Pause the video. Answer them. Play the video. OK, off you go. Right, so hopefully you gave yourself some time to do that. And let's go through the answers. So number one, what is the process that removes carbon dioxide from the atmosphere? The answer is, of course, photosynthesis. Number two, what compounds does carbon get put into? One, proteins, two, carbohydrates, and three, fats. And number five, how do animals take in the carbon? Well, they eat other animals or plants. OK. Right. So we've done step one and step two. Remember, step one was photosynthesis, where carbon dioxide from the atmosphere goes into plants. And step two was eating. So how animals get the carbon inside them by eating plants or other animals. So this step, step three, is all about what happens when we die. So plants and animals inevitably will die at some point, OK? And what happens when they die is the carbon is still there. It doesn't just go to waste. What happens is we have these things called decomposers. Now, this is one of your key words. Decomposers are living things, they're organisms that feed off death. Well, not death, but dead bodies of plants or animals and you can see this happening with this lovely sequence of photos of the pig so you've got a lovely pig that's died poor little thing and it's swelling up there it's going a bit pink and we'll talk about why that is in a minute and slowly it's turning back just to bone so all its flesh has been broken down by these things called decomposers now decomposers are mainly microorganisms like fungi and bacteria. Okay, we also have decomposers that are animals and they're called detritivores. Now, detritivores are things like worms, beetles, and maggots. So, if you've ever seen a crime series on telly where they see lots of flies and smell a horrible smell and they're like, oh, that must be because there's a dead body, that is because. Well, they can see the flies because flies can smell a dead body from miles away. They come and lay their eggs in it and those maggots feed off the dead body and grow into flies. So what happens is you're, the reason we get lots of flies is because those maggots have turned into flies once they fed off the dead body. Now, the reason why I said the pig swells up is because the microorganisms, as they're feeding off the dead body, are respiring so they're releasing gases like carbon dioxide which fill up the dead body to make it swell so death and decay yes these dead animals and plants are decomposed by decomposers so fungi and bacteria or detritivores so maggots worms or beetles can break down those dead plants and animals that also happens to feces or waste products okay so we've talked about the dead organisms and waste products of decaying animals and plants okay now that is what new usually will happen to a dead organism so the carbon is taken in by the decomposers but sometimes if the conditions aren't quite there so for example there's a lack of oxygen the decomposers cannot do that. So what happens is the dead animals and plants build up and over millions and millions of years, what you get is a fossil fuel because they get compressed together and they create this fossil fuel. For example, gas, coal or oil. And those fossil fuels, as I'm sure you have an awareness of, are used in things like petrol, in our burning in power stations and all these things and we're going to look at that in more detail in a minute okay so step three is all about how the carbon gets from animals and plants into 
decomposes or into fossil fuels. The other thing that I've not mentioned yet is that decomposes, so here, if we look here, decomposes, break down the dead animals and plants and they take in the carbon. What they also do is they release minerals like nitrates, which are really important, back into the soil and then plants can absorb those that way. So that is actually a different cycle, but it's worth mentioning here. We're primarily talking about the carbon cycle today, but there are other cycles as well. So let's just recap what we've looked at so far. We've looked at detritivores and decomposers. I want you to answer these questions. What is a detritivore? What two organisms are the most common decomposers and what did we mean by fossilisation? OK, so pause the video, have a go and then play the video and find out the answers. Off you go. OK, hopefully you've had a go at those questions and are eager to find out your answers. So question six is what is a detrivore? And it's not. Bring it again. Why was it frozen? Okay, so a detrivore is a small insect such as maggots, worms, and beetles which feed off the dead plants and animal. And remember, they take in the carbon from those dead plants and animals. Um, two organisms are most common decomposers are bacteria and fungi, they're the microorganism ones. And then what is fossilization where carbon gets trapped into fossil fuels over millions of years? OK, so mark those. And moving on to the next stage. Apologies, my computer seems to be a bit slow. Just trying to get to the next slide. Here we go. So step four, which is the last step. So remember, step one was how carbon dioxide in the atmosphere gets taken into the plants by photosynthesis. So the carbon goes from the atmosphere into plants. Then the carbon goes into animals from the plants. Then dead plants, dead animals, the carbon goes into decomposers by then breaking down the dead plants and animals. OK. The decomposers now have the carbon inside them or they get put into the carbon gets put into the fossils and fossil fuels. OK, so we've got carbon from the atmosphere into plants, into animals, then going into our decomposers and the fossil fuels. Now, we've talked then about how carbon goes from the atmosphere into living things or fossils. We haven't spoken yet about how it gets released back into the atmosphere. And there are two ways. The first way we're going to talk about is respiration. Now, you know that respiration is a process that all living things do. They react glucose and oxygen and it releases carbon dioxide, water and energy. And this is the bit we need to think about now is that all living things do it. So all living things replace the carbon back into the atmosphere that they have taken in. So here, this little sheepy here ate that plant. So the carbon went into the sheep. He's now replacing that carbon dioxide back into the atmosphere by respiring. Same applies to plants. Plants do respire. Lots of people forget that. But the plants take in the carbon dioxide from the atmosphere, but they can release it or they do release it back into the atmosphere too. Again, the dead, um, the organisms that feed off the dead plants and animals, they respire. So the worms, the maggots, the fungi, the bacteria, they respire releasing carbon dioxide back into the atmosphere. So there's lots and lots of respiration going on, releasing carbon dioxide back into the atmosphere. Now, the second way that um, carbon dioxide can be released back into the atmosphere is through this process called combustion. Now, combustion is a scientific word for burning. Now, if you look at the word equation here, you need a fuel, you need oxygen, 
you react those two things together and it releases carbon dioxide and water. Now the fuel is usually something like methane or a piece of paper, anything that contains carbon. And when you burn it, it releases the carbon dioxide back into the atmosphere. So in this factory here, there are some fossil fuels being burnt, releasing carbon dioxide back into the atmosphere. And where do we get the fuel from? We get it from fossil fuels. So the fossil fuels, this is where their carbon goes. It goes into our cat factories and the carbon then goes back out into the atmosphere because we burn it. Right, so let's have a pause a second and answer a few questions to review that section. So what is combustion, please? List the processes which add carbon dioxide to the atmosphere. And what is the process that removes carbon dioxide from the atmosphere? Three minutes. Pause the video. Off you go. Right, so hopefully you've answered those questions. Let's go through the answers. So what is combustion? Combustion is the process where we burn fuels and it releases carbon dioxide. Now my slide is being slow again, so I'm just waiting for it to load, um, but it will have the answers in a second. So number 10, oh, there we go. Number 10 was list the processes which add carbon dioxide to the atmosphere. And the answer was respiration and com combustion. They both add the carbon dioxide back into the atmosphere. Number 11, what is the process that removes carbon dioxide from the atmosphere? The answer is photosynthesis. Okay, lovely. So moving on then, there's one last thing we need to go through, and that is about how humans are impacting the carbon cycle. Now I'm just waiting for the slide to load. Here we go. So if you look, we've looked through all of these things. We've looked at step one, carbon going into plants through photosynthesis. We've looked at step two, plants, the ca carbon in plants going into animals. We've looked at step three, the dead plants and animals, the carbon from those going into decomposers, and we've looked, and or into fossils. And we've looked at step four of all the living things we talked about there, releasing the carbon dioxide back into the atmosphere through respiration or the burning of fossil fuels through combustion. And this is the bit that we are having an impact on. So if we think about, first of all, what happens when we burn fossil fuels, we don't just release carbon dioxide. We also release something called sulfur dioxide. And this is pollution. What happens is the sulfur dioxide reacts with the water in clouds and makes acid rain. That is something you're going to look at in future lessons. And this bit here, global warming, this is what we are really having an impact on. And it's a lot of it is to do with, with carbon. So one of the main things we're doing that's hurting or impacting the carbon cycle is we are taking down trees for our own uses, for building, etc. And that's called deforestation. Now you'll get a whole lesson on deforestation coming up um, and that will tell you all about it. But basically, if you take down trees, you're going to absorb less carbon dioxide from the atmosphere because there's less trees to photosynthesize. So we're doing that deforestation. The other thing that we're doing, and that's, sorry, that's getting rid of the um, photosynthesis line. The other thing that we're doing is we're burning more and more fossil fuels. The more fossil fuels we burn, the more carbon dioxide we're going to release. So not only are we stopping plants taking it in, we're actually adding to the atmosphere with carbon dioxide too. And that helps with the whole thing about global warming. And you're gonna, I'm not gonna go into that now because you've got a whole lesson on it. So I'm just gonna ask you to just review what we just talked about. So what are the main two ways that we are disrupt, disrupting and impacting the carbon cycle. I'm going to give you two minutes. Off you go. Okay, hopefully you've paused the video and answered the question. Now you're playing again to find out the answer. 
So we are impacting the um, carbon cycle by, first of all, releasing more carbon dioxide by combustion of fossil fuels. And secondly, um, deforestation is meaning that less carbon dioxide is absorbed by plants. Right, so that is the carbon cycle. Like I said, it is hard sometimes and there are lots and lots of stages, but that's OK because you can just re-watch this video and also you can ask your teachers any questions. So lots of people find on the first go, it's so much information they need to have another go at it. And that's all right. Don't feel bad if that's you. If you get it, that's great. And um, just to help you understand it, though, there's some summary questions that I'd like you to choose one of. Um, option one is a carbon atom in your body might have been part of a dinosaur millions of years ago. Explain how that could be true. That is a really cool one, but you need to be really detailed thinking about if I've got a carbon particle in me, how did that once or how could that have once been in a dinosaur? Because it is possible. Option two, describe in detail how carbon is cycled between living organisms and the air. So how does it get from living organisms to the air? But not just one step. There's a few steps there. Include the names of the processes involved. The last one, option three, is use that diagram there that's in your booklet and put the keywords in the correct places to describe what's going on in the carbon cycle. OK, so have a go at one of those activities and please, please send your answers to your teacher and they can mark it and they can give you feedback. It's been lovely talking to you and I shall see you soon. Take care.